Hello one, hello all, it's your boy Scooping Yo. It's January, you know what time it is. End of the year stuff, I know I slacked on in the past, but here we go, I'm actually gonna actually give you guys a video. I know last year I just gave you guys a list at the tail end of a random video, I don't even remember which one it was. Anyway, you're probably expecting a top 10 best movie, but I'm gonna give you a appetizer, a precursor. Here's the top five worst slash disappointing, and I, I wanna emphasize more on disappointing because I usually tend to steer clear from like the really bad movies, the ones that get panned, body slammed, and John Cena FU'd by the critics and audiences alike. So, I mean, if you think I'm going to go see A Dog's Way Home, whatever it's called, this January, you're bugging. <laughs> anyway, that being said, <clears throat> I haven't really seen like the worst of the worst in 2018. But I have seen some movies that disappointed me, so here are five of those. Number five, I'm going to start with something that's a little controversial, because it's probably still fresh in some in everyone's minds, and that's Aquaman. But yeah, man, you know what the thing is? I compare this movie to Venom, because both of these movies, to me, like Venom and Aquaman, are bad. But I enjoyed Venom for some reason. There's something about the performances from, from uh, performance. I should, like, there's no one else that carries that movie like Tom Hardy. So Tom Hardy's performance and just the fun that the movie had... And the same can be said for Aquaman because the movie does have fun. Does have fun. It's just that the script is just. It made this movie so boring to watch. Like all I saw, honestly, was just the script being like translated on screen. It was just the MacGuffin factor was just horrible. I just saw these characters going from here to here, here, and the exposition. Like, okay, you need to go here and then here and then here. Black Manta, <laughs> just a waste of a, of a villain. The setup, to me, the setup was really good in the beginning, and then they just throw him away. The only thing I can say about Aquaman is just that the action is directed really well. And and when James Wan has his touch in this movie, it's clear and it's great to see. That's why I don't hate Aquaman as much. And people say it's like their top five in the DC or top three, which isn't saying much. But I do agree with that. It's probably better than Batman v Superman and, you know, Suicide Squad easily. <laughs> Number four, Halloween. <sighs> I don't think that making movies like these should be as hard when people my phone's going off right now when people want to see a slasher film you just gotta hit the notes and and do it well i don't understand why the choices that were made were made and who okayed them because without any spoilers halfway through this movie or about going into the third act there's just this random plot twist that no one saw coming and it just feels like it was shoehorned in because they get rid of it not even five minutes later. So it's like, I'm, for, for some, for some reason that was okay. <clears throat> Apart from that, characters are introduced with little to no backstory. There are threads that are pushed and then just never explored. This movie could have been a lot better had it just been not as convoluted as it was. Number three, The Predator. This is a movie I was looking forward to heavily. Directed by Shane Black who is a fantastic director, had a great cast to work with, and for some some for some for reason, I just see like a, a studio putting their hands all over this thing. Whenever they were pitching this thing, was like, maybe we should make everything bigger, and that will equal better. Which it does not, because they introduce a bigger, buffer predator, makes everything convoluted, and then once we fight, once we face this final big-ass predator, Everything wraps up in a matter of 10 minutes, and it is the most rushed and disappointing endings to a movie I've seen in a while. In the last scene, like the end credit scene that people knew, <laughs> that they knew people weren't going to stick around for, is just shoehorned in the last five minutes of the movie, and it was, it was god awful. Uh, yeah, I was looking forward to this movie a lot. The Predator, like the first Predator is amazing, and the other two, you know, you could argue are okay, and you know, a, a lot of them don't get love, but, um, this one is just easily, like, the worst that I've seen out of all of them. <laughs> number two, I think people are going to be surprised that I didn't put it at number one. But I think that there's an argument to be made that this movie isn't awful. But I found this movie painful. And that is Solo, A Star Wars Story. <clears throat> when I was jotting down notes for, for this movie, all I could think of was just pointless. <laughs> Because Solo starts out the same and he ends the same. There's no arc. When I was watching this movie, I was waiting for some sort of like character moment where he was just going to be like, okay, I need to do this so my arc can go all the way through, you know? So my arc can change in this movie and it just doesn't. And then we're in the last 15 minutes. I'm like, is this movie about to end right now? And, you know, like, I, I know I just said that the Predator had a disappointing ending, but Solo was just... 
it felt like something that you would see at the beginning of a movie. It was just so tame. And it, it was just the end of the movie, and I was shocked. I was like, oh, my, and the very ending. Like, look, I haven't even hit all the points of this movie, but I'm just thinking out loud. Like, the very end of this movie was just so insulting, where it was just like, you better stick around for a part two, and I just didn't care. Like, everything that you've done, everything up to this point that you did to this movie just does not affect me or interest me in any way possible. Star Wars is a bad way right now, and this movie does not help its cause whatsoever. I know people were complaining about just, you know, like the social justice warrior aspects of The Last Jedi. <laughs> but the robot in this movie, I think her, her I think she's called L3, <clears throat> will just bash you over the head with all that kind of nonsense. And if like I said, if you hated that stuff in, in The Last Jedi, get ready, man, because they are they are they're coming for you in this one. This is the second time that they're a, a Star Wars story movie had two different directors or multiple di directors directing a single movie. Like this it shows this just cannot happen. How do you think that Marvel is getting all these properties done so well and people are going to see them? It's not because they are changing directors and having reshoots and doing all this crap with their movies and going different directions. It's because they have a clear plan, clear plan, and they're sticking with it. Star Wars, for some reason, just cannot stick to one idea. And that's because they don't have anyone at the top telling these stories. And I got to tell you right now, I'm just completely disinterested with anything Star Wars. The next Star Wars movie, like the Skywalker Saga, which is episode nine, needs to be <laughs> the greatest thing I've ever seen for me to get back on board. Number one, and this is pretty sim this is pretty easy. Like this is easily the worst movie that I've like sat down and watched and was just completely disappointed. The Cloverfield Paradox. Man, here's the thing. Like, Cloverfield had this big wave of, like, hype. And from the moment that the the 10 Cloverfield Lane trailer dropped, because I remember I went to go see 13 Hours, and that trailer just popped up, and I had nothing, you know, I knew nothing about it. That trailer just dropped in the theater, and I seen it in the theater for the first time, and that rarely happens for me. And I was just completely mind-blown. Not, not only was the trailer shocking, but the movie, 10 Cloverfield Lane, was absolutely phenomenal. One of my favorites of the year that it came out. So... Cloverfield had this great wave of like hype and anticipation. The move to make to the move to put this movie on Netflix after just one trailer is just shot. It's it's like it has that shock factor where you're just intrigued, but it's it clearly shows why they did it. They just put a whatever budget they had for marketing. They just did it on Super Bowl Sunday, and they're just like, okay, here it is. You can see it if you want, because the movie was just the most forgettable thing ever completely just shoehorned like Cloverfield stuff at the very end it was just so bad it reminds me of movies like Life where it's just like this claustrophobic space you know monster movie but Life was actually a good movie this was just a shockingly boring and like I can't even tell you anything that happened because this movie was just so forgettable and it was just completely disappointing as someone who loved 10 Cloverfield Lane this is just anyway that is my top five most disappointing movies of 2018 if you have a movie that you thought was disappointing let me know in the comments below i was considering putting bird box in this but you know i was one of those people that ignored the hype i just saw the movie for what it is and i ended up thinking that the movie was okay but i think that the talk about bird box was just the fact that everyone has netflix and it was just like the most accessible movie at the time because it came out like right on christmas day or like around there anyway i digress Top 10 worst slash disappointing, I said top 10, top 5 disappointing slash worst movies of 2018. There you have it. If you enjoyed this video, give me a like, subscribe. Thank you if you already are subscribed. I'm Scoobingo from the 5th row, and I'm gone.